Welcome back, everyone. So today we're going to talk about vectors and scalars. So what is a vector and what is a scalar? Well, first of all, let's talk about what vectors are. So in physics, we're often concerned about the concept of direction with any measured quantity. Not all of them, but some of them. Probably the most familiar example for most people would be with navigation. The idea that you need to know how far and which way you are going. So the how far is what we consider to be the magnitude of the vector, and the which way would be the direction. So when we talk about vectors, they actually have technically three parts. So they have an amount or magnitude, a unit, and of course, the direction. So let's take a look at an example of a vector versus something that is called a scalar. Now, a scalar is just a measured quantity without making reference to its direction. So let's take, for example, John was traveling at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. So we have a magnitude of 100 and a unit of kilometers per hour versus John was traveling at a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour, but going east. Now that's the thing. In everyday language, the concept of velocity and speed are, those two words are inter used interchangeably. However, the, that is not technically correct. Speed and velocity, all, albeit they are related, they are not the same thing. And we're going to get into those particular details later on in the semester. So let's, uh, let's take a deeper look. So starting off with scalars. So again, these are any measured quantity that do not make reference to direction. So some examples, 30 seconds, uh, 59 kilograms, 100 watts, 100, uh, 10 meters, sorry, just learning how to read here, 10 meters. So there are two components associated with a scalar quantity. We have the numerical value, which I almost always refer to as the numerical coefficient and the unit. So when we look, we have 30 seconds. The 30 is the numerical coefficient and the seconds here, that is your unit. Now let's compare that to a vector quantity. So with a vector quantity, they have the same thing as scalars, but also direction. So let's take a look at some examples here. 30 meters up, 5 meters per second west, 20 newtons down. So we have our numerical coefficient, our unit, and our direction. When we talk about vectors, it always has a direction associated with it, but there are multiple standards for actually communicating that direction. So we're going to be talking about the vector coordinate system. So there are three ways, mm, technically there's more than three. Um, there's actually a fourth one, but we're not going to get too much into that. Um, but in physics, there are basically three ways. We use um, a compass system, and there are two versions of that, and a polar coordinate system. So method one, and this is uh, my, my favorite and the one that I find to be the most straightforward, is, the, um, is a type of compass-based system. So for example, Let's say we have this direction here. So what we're going to do is we're going to parse what those things mean. And to do that, I'm going to draw a compass rose. And what I mean by a compass rose is just this, the north, south, east, and west directions. So that is our compass rose. So how do we translate what we've got written here onto here? Well, to, that, to do that, we're just going to set up a random vector here. So here, I've got some random vector in green. And I'm actually going to use it to point at our thing over here to help us clarify what's going on. Okay, so first of all, the N means you start pointing north first. So here's our vector, and we're pointing north. The 30 degrees stands for how far we turn, by how much. And this, the last letter here is which way. So this reads, point north and then rotate 30 degrees towards the east. So here we are north, and then we rotate 30 degrees to the east. Now the length of the vector, that is representative of the magnitude or the size of it. And of course, the direction is represented by that angle. So this angle in here, that would be 30 degrees. Now I do want to point out with this, this is not the only way to actually express the direction of this vector. There's another way that we could do it. So in this one, it does say north 30 degrees east. However, if we, if we look at the compass here, you know that this angle in here is a total of 90 degrees because the angle between north and east is 90 and between east and south is also 90, south and west, 
west and north, those are all perpendicular to each other. So if this total angle here is 90 and this part up here is just 30, the remaining part here has to be 60 degrees. And that's of course because of complementary angle theorem. So alternatively, we could have actually written this instead of north 30 degrees east, we could have done it this way. We could have started off east and rotated 60 degrees to the north. So the alternate version of this would be east 60 degrees north, and that is an equivalent direction. The reason why I particularly prefer this particular notation, because it's a little bit more intuitive on how you're moving. It's much easier to read this. It's, it's, it's a direct read. So you can see that it's north 30 degrees towards the east. And I, I find that personally for my liking, I find this version to be a little bit easier to interpret, especially in comparison to the next method, which is the method that I don't prefer. However, it is still very, very commonly used. So in the second method, it is very similar to the first but the wording is a little bit different. So in this example, that same direction we had before would be written as 30 degrees east of north. My personal dislike for this is simply for the fact that you have to parse the language in order to have a great, a bet, a, the, the, the correct sense of the direction. Now, for some folks, that's not a problem. Uh, and for some, they may find that this is actually even easier to read. I personally find it less so. This one you really have to think about it. So you're going 30 degrees east of north. I prefer the north, then turn 30 degrees towards the east. I think the first method is a, is a more direct algorithm than this one here. And that being said, here's how you can convert from method two to method one. So you take the original notation that they have here, east 30 degrees um, east, my goodness, try that again, 30 degrees east of north. Essentially what you do is you eliminate the of, and then you take the north and drag it out front. And then you get the exact same notation that we had before. So it's a fairly easy process to convert from this notation to this one. Now, method three, this is also a very good method of reporting angles. And this one is much more commonly used, especially in post-secondary. And there are some distinct advantages to using the rectangular coordinate system or RCS. And one of those is it makes it actually easier to do computer-based uh, computation of angles. Um, you're not relying on looking at a physical grid or a compass rose to establish your directions. Everything is always in reference to the positive x-axis. So in math, a couple of big ideas. The positive x-axis here is always considered to be the zero degree mark. Then we rotate counterclockwise so that this point north would be 90 degrees, west would be 180 degrees, and south would be 270 degrees. So the angles are always measured against the east line and is always measured uh, counterclockwise, or at least the positive angles are measured counterclockwise. If you go clockwise, the angles are considered to be negative. So let's take a look at our first example 45 degrees. RCS would be in compass directions east 45 degrees north. The second example, 100 degrees RCS. Well, here we have to do a little bit of math. So if that's 90 degrees, that means that little remaining bit has to be 10 degrees. So that would be north 10 degrees west. And here's my argument 100 degrees is not immediately obvious that you are traveling north but slightly west. Whereas when you say north 10 degrees west, even just doing a cursory look at that direction, it's very obvious that you're going north and a little bit west. Let's take a look at the next example, 250 degrees RCS. Well, we know that this portion here, this first portion here, that's 180 degrees. So this remaining portion here, that's got to be 70 degrees. So in this case, west 70 degrees towards the south. Now we could have looked at it another way is we could realize that this point over here is 270 degrees. So this little bit here, that would be 20 degrees. So alternatively, we could have said south 20 degrees west and so on and so forth. And now let's talk about this method number four, which we don't work with often in physics, but this one is more geared towards um, aeronautics. So whether you're in a boat or you're in a plane, essentially. 
And with this form of uh, direction or nav- uh, this, this uh, navigation system for directions, it's a little bit different than the RCS setup. And it looks a little bit like this. So we're going to just do, go off to the side here. And I'm going to uh, drop down another compass rose. So in this case, how this system works is that north is considered to be zero degrees. And then you go clockwise. So east would be 90 degrees, south would be 180, and west would be 270 degrees. So this is the standard that is used in all navigation, including your GPS. So let's continue on here. And we're going to start getting into some practical examples of how to work with with vectors and scalars. Um, So we're going to take a look again at um, the differences between scalars and vectors in everyday sort of things. So for example, things like distance and speed and linear acceleration, these are all scalar amounts. And if you notice, all of the symbols are just a single letter, but they don't have that vector notation on top. So the letter D is, stands for distance. The letter V stands for speed. Now, that may seem a bit unusual. Why would we choose the letter V? Well, a couple of reasons why. Now, V for velocity, but speed in French is vitesse. So using the letter V without the harpoon is also speed, just not in English. And it does make sense to keep the symbols consistent because adding a different symbol for speed would make the math a little bit more complex. As I mentioned earlier, speed and velocity are related. They're just not the same thing all the time. And the, those particular nuances of those concepts we're going to explore in great, great detail later. So now let's take a look at some vector names for some common things. So the vector version of a distance is something called displacement, and it's not the same thing um, as distance. Velocity is related, is the vector version of uh, speeds, and acceleration doesn't have a specific name, so I often refer to it as vector acceleration. And the symbols are the same, with the, with the no, uh, notable difference is that they have a little harpoon on top. So a D with a harpoon, a V with a harpoon, an A with a harpoon. So example of displacement is 10 meters up versus just 10 meters, which was a scalar amount. Velocity, 20 meters per second, north 45 degrees east. Acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared down. So there you have the numerical coefficient, the unit, and the direction. So the next topic we're going to address is how we actually can represent vectors graphically. So when solving vector problems, we can do them both mathematically or we can actually do them using scale diagrams. So we're going to discuss the anatomy of a vector first of all. So let's take a look here at vector B and vector C. Both vector B and vector C have a magnitude of 50 each, but the difference is vector B is going to the right and vector C is going up. So when you look at the two vectors, their physical length are the same, but the arrows point in different directions. The head of a vector refers to where the arrowhead is, and the base of the vector, we call that the tail. So the direction of the vector itself is represented by the direction in which way the arrowhead is pointing. So in this case, it's very obvious that this vector arrow is pointing to the right. So the head of the vector is pointing to the right, and that is representative of the direction. The physical length of the vector represents the magnitude of the vector. 